Thank you uh, for having me. I'm really excited to uh, give this talk. I, I talk a lot about esports and gambling and casinos, and a lot of times what we talk about is uh, VIP experience. So, um, my companies, I have a, a gaming company and an esports company, and what we always say is that on the one hand, you have gamers, this hugely underserved demographic, and then you have casinos, which are the experts at this VIP, sexy, cool experience. And in preparing for this, it was really the first time that I actually sat down and I thought about, well, wh what do we actually mean by VIP? Um, what does it mean to treat somebody like a VIP and to have a VIP experience? So, um, as mentioned, GameCo, I invented the first video game gambling machine. Uh, we're live now in Atlantic City. We're the first company approved by regulators anywhere in the world for what's called skill-based gaming and casinos. I'm also the founder of the Gamer Agency. We are the largest independent esports production company based in New York. We do a lot of uh, work with tournament organizers and brands and mention a little bit about it. So this is our gaming product. We call it the VGM or video game gambling machine. It looks a lot like an arcade cabinet or a slot machine. In fact, it is a slot machine. We adapted it from existing slot technology, though we designed here our own custom controller that's kind of simplified and ruggedized for the casino environment so that it holds up in the casino and is easier for people to get into. So our machine works a lot like a slot machine. You bet with cash or tickets, bet anywhere from a dollar to $20. You have about a minute to play. Um, sometimes there are random elements with power-ups. It accounts for only about 20% of the payout. So mathematically, about 80% of the payout is based on the player's actual skill in the video game. And we like to say the player's score is their payout. Um, at the Gamer Agency, we do a lot of esports work. Our largest client is Microsoft. Uh, we run a uh, studio for them above uh, Microsoft Store in New York, the flagship store, and we produce esports tournaments and content. Uh, so if anybody's ever in New York, come see us. We uh, run programs seven days a week at the venue. Um, so a little bit of background, slot machines, at least in the U.S., they generate 75% of casino revenue. It's where all the money is. But that's been really stagnant and declining for the last few decades. Um, and a lot of it has to do with gamer stereotypes, which are really outdated and dangerous. The first two years I was out fundraising for Gameco, a lot of times I'd meet with a casino executive or an investor and they would say, well, gamers are teenagers, they can't even gamble, but I'm sure everyone here knows average gamers 35 years old, they over-index for education and income, and it's a really huge opportunity to change the future of the casino. And ultimately, our goal is to create this VIP experience for gamers. Imagine combining the nightclub with an arcade and what that would mean to our culture where we don't really have places to get together that make us feel that cool. So we're working on these programs of the casino floor of the future. We work with all the major casinos in the US, now EU, starting to expand to Macau in Asia and Latin America as well. And so just talking a little bit about demographics, this is a huge market. So if you do a really simple four-part test, you have to be over 21 in the US. We look at the top percentage of household income. Do you play video games and visit casinos today? That's 23 million people in the States and another 24 plus in, uh, outside of the US. And it's not just millennials, there's so much talk about millennials these days, I'm Gen X, and we see a lot of older folks as well. In fact, our very first customer in Atlantic City was a Vietnam veteran and his wife. They played for an hour, had an amazing time, and now uh, are sort of part of our family. And what's really interesting about this, we staff ambassadors at our games on the weekends and we ask people, 
50% of the people that play our games wouldn't have gambled in the casino if it wasn't for the ability to play a video game. So this number is probably maybe only half of the actual market because half of the people aren't even accounted for it because they wouldn't come to the casino otherwise if there wasn't an offering for them. And I think a lot of it has to do with, well, where do you play video games now? So I love Dave and Buster's, but I think it doesn't really make you feel like a VIP. It makes me often, when I go there, kind of feel like a child or a family. Uh, living rooms are really fun, but it's just, you know, me and my friends. There's real no VIP experience there. We produce a lot of esports events. It's really hard in a uh, stadium venue to make somebody have this real VIP one on one experience. And so, um, who are VIPs? And I kind of thought about this a little bit. There's probably a few different types, and I'm probably missing some, and if anyone else has other ideas, I'd love to hear. But I think one of the first are, who are our biggest fans? They're the most loyal. Um, who are the biggest spenders? That's typically what you think about in Las Vegas, the high rollers getting comped in their uh, hotel room. Uh, now with esports uh, players and teams, they have the clout, that's who people want to hang out with. Um, and then like-mindedness and, and community. I've been making video games for 20 plus years. I love our community. I want to create a place that we all get together and have fun and there just doesn't really exist that. So this was the hardest part of putting this together because again, for years now I've been saying VIP, VIP, but I really didn't know what I meant. Um, and I did a lot of research on what do people look for in a VIP experience, what do brands consider VIP, and I ultimately boiled it down to these four pillars. So first is your brand, what's your promise and value, and I think authenticity we always talk about for gamers is so important, and community. And then the environment, we wanna be in a place that's cool and has appeal and is clean, but also is like really high quality and efficient. One of the biggest turnoffs is just like, you get to the check-in at uh, the casino and now you're waiting in a line for an hour. So we have ideas about how we're gonna change that. And then the experience from top to bottom. I wanna come to a place that's unique and purpose-built for me. I want it to be personalized with just the absolute top service and be really meaningful to me in a way that I don't find elsewhere. Uh, and then the culture, I mean, we wanna all get together with people that are creative and um, critical and that it's responsive to us and our interests. So one of the things that I wanted to do today, and this is really the first time I've ever put this together, is think about, well, what's the player's journey? So let's say a year from now we're successful and we create these purpose-built spaces in casinos. What's your journey gonna be like from the first time you learn about it, to the coming there, to the day after. So I put together kind of this visual journey. So the first is discovery, you have to find out about it. And one of the things that we've learned is casinos aren't really great at marketing to new audiences. They've spent the last 20, 30 years just sending out newsletters to their current audience. And so we work a lot with our casino partners on advertising and marketing to our gamer community. Social sharing, so I'm on Facebook and someone sends me, hey, you can play video games at the casino now. One of the things that's really interesting for us, now that we're live in casinos, we get the highest engagement on the casino's social feeds than anything else. And part of it is the casinos are a little tone deaf in their marketing, again, Social doesn't really line up with kind of the older slot machine audience. And so when our content's out there, we just see higher rates of engagement. Um, you're the first contact, so I get a email. I've decided to come to Las Vegas to go to the video game casino. You know, hey, we're really looking forward. Your VIP concierge will be there. Here's his uh, phone number and email. Text him if you have any questions. Um, you're traveling, we're starting to advertise so on air, airlines from uh, Los Angeles and San Francisco and Seattle and Detroit and New York. So now you're there on the airline, you're learning about the product, you're really getting excited about coming to the uh, casino. 
when you arrive, imagine that there's a dedicated concierge that's like a real gamer. So interesting story, we staff brand ambassadors at the casinos and first thing we did, well, you have like hot girls at the uh, casino. It didn't work at all. People didn't know how to connect with them. Um, and they didn't really know how to interpret that. So what we ended up doing is we recruited gamers. So now we have 20, 30-something gamers. They look like us. They wear game code t-shirts. If you're looking in the machine and you don't know what uh, is going on, they come up, hey, you play video games? I do too. What do you play? Get you into the game, help explain the experience. Um, Personal check-in, so I just described earlier, I travel full-time, so I live in casinos and hotels. The check-in process is just terrible. So imagine now, as soon as you arrive, your concierge is waiting for you, he's got an iPad, checks you in, takes you right up to your room. Themed rooms, so we're working with game publishers and casinos. Who would love to go to a casino and have the Call of Duty room or the Assassin's Creed room and there's a PC or Xbox, and the entire, every game you'd ever want to play is waiting there for you. That's coming right now. Um, signage around the venue so that you know that this is available. Maybe you arrived at the casino and you didn't even know you could play video games. We've got to message this to people so that they know it's available. Entertainment, we're bringing things like video games live and 8-bit uh, circus, I think it's called, too. Um, venues because we have our own entertainment and our own culture and we don't necessarily want to see outdated rockers. We want to see things that are relevant to us. Um, sure, we want to get spa treatments too and we want to be treated really special. Um, we want to go to special video game themed restaurants and have special meals that are, you know, just for us and touch on our culture and interests. We want to meet people at the casino, guys meet girls, guys meet guys, girls meet girls. It's fun. It's an amazing environment that just doesn't exist anyplace else. Uh, we're building gaming lounges at casinos. So over the next year or two, you'll see a number of purpose-built spaces at casinos with esports and competitions and casual games, game launches, new products. And these will be dedicated areas on the floor. At Microsoft, we run a broadcast program, and you'll see Twitch and Beam and Xbox broadcasting happening there so that you're part of the entertainment. Um, esports, all of the casinos want to be part of uh, esports, and there's a lot of activity in the space right now. I think Las Vegas is and will continue to be one of the world class destinations for esports. Uh, sports book, there's a lot of legal and illegal betting happening in and around esports. Uh, last year in November, Downtown Grand Casino took the first legal sports book bet on uh, League of Legends with William Hill, and you're going to see that expanding everywhere. Uh, one thing that our research shows, and probably you know from your experience as gamers, we have a very high propensity and interest in gambling, and so there's a real synergy there. Um, these are our machines, and we're licensing really popular uh, IP like Terminator 2 and Star Trek, and we'll be announcing a lot more over the coming weeks, including a number of AAA video games. So games you would play at home on your Xbox or PC, you'll now be able to come to the casino and gamble playing those games and win real money, real money, win prizes. So Audi just sponsored an eSports team, and I think... One of the best trends happening in the industry is the fact that you have these non-endemic luxury brands that are starting to get into the space. So it's not just PC and keyboard and headphone companies anymore, but it's actually groups that are really relevant to, to us and aspirational, which I think is really important. Um, going to the nightclub, I think we like to party and have fun, and I think there's a Real misunderstanding about how gamers want to socialize. I mean, what an amazing environment here where we all come together and we meet people and we're not this outdated, introverted stereotype. We want to have fun. We just want to do it with our community. Uh, bottle service. I always say the first uh, casino patron to win big cash, win bottle service, be treated like a VIP, the first gamer to have that experience, and we've actually had a few now. We had someone 
win our highest payout in Atlantic City, won $5,000 playing our first game on the floor at Tropicana. He's our best ambassador ever. He told so many people about what we're doing. He also happened to come back and lose that 5,000 over the next few days, which is good for us in the casino. But really important for us to have that experience that, again, just doesn't exist other places. <laughs> and then, you know, the next day, what, you know, take it all the way. I love this shot, and I think it really, um, you know, epitomizes something that doesn't necessarily exist for us. You're not going to uh, barcade and having the same kind of crazy experience that you're going to have uh, anywhere else. So... Um, that's what I think is the VIP experience for gamers, and I think that the casino is really the perfect environment for that. So uh, I'd love if people have questions or want to talk a little bit more about what we're doing. I'd uh, love to hear from folks. Well, let me ask uh, a couple questions because I know that, uh, like myself, you love classic video games, classic arcade games. Uh, do you find that there's... Uh, an appeal towards the nostalgia of games, or do you find that the more contemporary games are bringing in a newer player, or do you think it's just a spectrum of gamers or gamers? So I think it's a spectrum, though, very interestingly, when we meet with investors and casino operators, they go right to Call of Duty. Um, you know, it's one of the most played games, it's one of the most watched games, it's one of the most known games. It's also easy for people to understand it, so I would say from the investment community and the, our, our customer, um, contemporary games are critical. When we talk to gamers, and I've probably interviewed 2,000 gamers over the last three years about what they want, it's really a range. And we're working on licensing classic games that we grew up with, mobile games that we might play now, casual games like Match 3 and Hidden Object, uh, next week, we launch our first Match 3 game. In two weeks, we launch a basketball game, so sports as well. So I think having a range of games is really important, but I think it also depends a lot on who you're speaking to, who are the stakeholders. I think from the gamer's perspective, we want a wide variety of games. Um, you know, in my, in my travels in uh, dealing with casinos, one of the things that I heard was from slot managers saying, you know, my, my player base is dying out, literally dying out. <laughs> yeah. And so I know that a lot of them were interested in bringing in new players, but like you said before, they were so focused on millennials and their millennials don't have money and they're, you know, all of that sort of stuff. But because they needed to replace that business, did they greet you with open arms? Did they greet you with suspicion? Did you have to bash your head against the wall for a while? So we self-funded the company for the first two years and it was a lot of bashing head against wall um, there was a lot of uncertainty around the appeal. Is it worth bringing in this audience? There's a metric that's super important in casinos called win per unit. How much does each position make in a day? And some of these games make a lot of money. So top performing slot machines make $1,500, $1,800 a day for the casino. That is an enormous amount when you think about a casino that has, let's say, three, 5,000 machines on the floor, and they're doing a floor average of three, four, five hundred dollars across all machines. But to your point, they have to deal with it now. It's so critical for them to appeal to a new audience. And the two stats that I share the most that I think are super relevant, 60% of our players are under 40. So we are attracting a new audience, and 50% of our players wouldn't have gambled if it wasn't for our machines at the casino. So that means half of every dollar is 100% incremental revenue for the casino. And because slots have been down over the last two decades, there's no lack of floor space. If anyone's been to a casino, you know these places not necessarily in Europe, but in US and Asia, massive facilities. And it's not uncommon that they've reduced their number of slot positions from 30, 50% over the last 10 years. So there's tons of space on the floor. So what we're finding now is that casinos are taking areas, they're dedicating it to gamers, and they're looking for product that appeal to us. And now they're putting together really wide 360 programs to attract and retain and 
ultimately monetize us at the casino. No, I know you travel around a lot. Do you find that uh, you're having to be your own personal brand ambassador and bringing that enthusiasm to, to make this happen? I mean, it seems like a labor of love for you, so. It, I, I love it. So like I said, I've been making video games 20 years. If there's a platform to make a game, I've done it. Console, social, mobile, board games. I was part of the team that created Game Lounge on DirecTV. I've been doing this for a really long time and I love games. But yes, this is what I do. I meet with casinos, brands. I speak about the opportunity for us to have places to get together. And a lot of it is just because this is what I want for myself. I want to have a place that's not just, if we wanted to play video games tonight, where would we go? We'd go to your house. But where do we go to have this experience that we can't have any place else? And so it is absolutely a passion and labor of love for me. Well, Blaine, thanks for sharing uh, your passion with us. Thank you. Thanks for having me.